Hej, uh, Werner Nystrand, styrelseledamot i Sveriges arkitekter Skåne. Och välkomna åter till arkitekturdagarna i Malmö. Vi i Sveriges arkitekter Skåne är samarbetspartner till evenemanget i år. Och vi är glada att ha med oss det spännande arkitektkontoret från Holland, Överträders W. De skapar demonterbar arkitektur med okonventionella byggmaterial. And here to speak on the topic of circular design and architecture, welcome Reinder Bakker. Hello, Rene, nice to meet you. Thank you for your introduction. Um, so, hello, I'm uh, Rene Bakker of Traders Way. Um, it's interesting to do this for the first time uh, to give an online lecture. I give many lectures, but it's the first time online. So uh, I hope you all hear me well uh, and you understand everything. Um, I don't see anything of my um, slideshow yet. So uh, I hope to I can get some images. Ah, yes, it's sorry, it worked. It's there a little hiccup here. <laughs> I think there was a delay for some reason. So uh, yeah, this is us, uh, Reinder and Hester. Uh, we are small. Uh, a uh, design company from the Netherlands based in Amsterdam. And, um, but we are, although we are only together, um, we are, uh, we work with many, many um, people and um, that makes our job so interesting. So for every project uh, we do, we collect uh, a team and we, with this team, we do the project. And um, this can be architects, this can be engineers, uh, but it can also be uh, uh, a market vendor or a writer or an illustrator or a gardener, uh, experts. And that's really nice. So for every project, we, we set up our network. Um, we say we are spatial designers, but we also call ourselves sometimes uh, um, material. Uh, what we do is material choreography. Um, and that's... I will tell you why. Um, because um, one thing we do is uh, if we build with waste, we um, demolish it and we make something uh, new uh, out of it. And uh, the other thing is what we are really interested to do is building with new materials to make something out of this and then to take it apart and to give the, the, the material uh, another uh, another life and to extend its uh, the, the lifespan of the material and um, we are not uh, trained as architects uh, we studied design academy in Eindhoven uh, and we started with very small projects and they get bigger and bigger so we started mainly with festivals and fairs and then went to exhibitions interiors pavilions Slowly, we move to architecture. So uh, next year, we will build some real uh, buildings. And what is interesting, if you work on these temporary projects, like a festival project or a small pavilion, it's uh, the pavilion is there only for a couple of days, mostly, or maybe a couple of months. And then you have to take it apart. And then uh, you are really confronted for who is the owner of the material, because um, yeah, after nine days, for example, you, you still have this material, you have to, to deal with it. So um, uh, the, the, the knowledge we uh, gain in um, this temporary building, we try to apply that in uh, bigger building projects for now. So we work on, I will show you later at the end where we are working on. Um, but it's interesting that if you, uh, if you have for nine days, need materials is actually the same challenge uh, if you need for 30 years uh, materials. Uh, normally architects don't think about what will happen after 30 or 50 years with a building. We try to do that and to yeah, reinvent this kind of um, thinking. Um, and that means that you also get a completely different um, design process because um, the old, I call it the old process, is very linear. You start with a concept, you make a sketch design, a temporary design. At a certain point, you uh, get in contact with a contractor, 
uh, and the com contractor will arrange the material. And of course, you say that you have to buy this kind of material. And then there is the user at the end. And the disassembling is not part of the design uh, process because it's far away in the future, or maybe not even very far away in the future, but it's not part of the design process. Um, our process is different. We call it like an iterative process. Uh, you have the concept, uh, that's where we start with. But then very soon you get the, we get the user and the material. So we already get, uh, we, for example, we try to collect material already in the, in the sketch design process. And sometimes you already have to buy materials in the sketch design process, which is completely different the way, yeah, in a different, it goes in a completely different way. And, we also work with, with normal contractors, but also with specialists sometimes, and you need them really early in the process. So that's what I mean with setting up a team and then going through all these phases. Uh, and it's way more chaotic because you draw something with a certain size of material, and then at the end it doesn't fit, so you have to go back because it's not available, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, and we try to design the process till this assembly. Um, and I will show you how this works in some, uh, some projects we did. And this is one of the first projects. It's for us a bit of an older project, but this, this is where it started. And we did it with our good friends and neighbor, uh, Bureau Sla Architects, uh, neighbors now in the office, because they're sitting here next door, uh, but also uh, Peter, the owner of the Rosla, is, uh, was my neighbor, and that's how we met in Amsterdam. Um, what we did, we lived in the north of Amsterdam, and that time it was very uh, a neighborhood, poor neighborhood, and there were not many things happening. There were no cafes, uh, nobody wanted to live there, quite a lot of crime. Well, a complicated neighborhood. I think every big city knows this. Um, uh, and what we did, we bought this, uh, I'll, I'll show you first what, it, what we made. We made this uh, bar uh, and we, we, we decided we want to make a bar because there was no, uh, we couldn't drink, get a coffee in our neighborhood. Um, so how did we make this bar? Uh, we bought this fan for 2,300 euros and we had a motto, het komt altijd goed, which means it will always be all right because we just started with a fan and without a real plan, actually. Um, and then there is the Dutch eBay website. Um, and the Dutch eBay website, it's called Marktplaats and it's very dense. It's now nowadays owned by eBay. Uh, and we, we traveled through uh, the Netherlands and we bought all kinds of materials from window frames, etc. cetera, uh, to, to, to roof lights, to tiles, whatsoever and we collected also all the stories around this so this is our website we had at that time we collected all the stories of uh, of all those materials because it's really fun to drive around and to yeah to find stones to find all these materials um and at the end we had like uh, 50 supplier material suppliers on this ebay website marktplaats uh, and we had many stories uh, and then uh, we had to, to, to build something out of that. Uh, so we called it 100% Marktplaats. Uh, we drove 10,000 kilometers. We had 48 um, bargains and, well, we collected many uh, stories. And then we just started to buy, uh, to build, sorry. Uh, we started to build and uh, you don't know if it fits or if it works. And actually, this was not a process like first you buy everything and then you build. It was actually similar. Uh, and then it was on the Dutch news um, and we had really a lot of fun as well. Uh, and we always had the idea for us, it was very important that um, we wanted to show that you can make something uh, from secondhand materials, but that looks like new. So we burned all the, the secondhand wood uh, and we painted everything with white paint. Uh, with this all little cans bought on Marktplatz put together and we made our own Marktplatz uh, white. Um, and that's actually what we, what we did. And we also, uh, the 150 employees of Marktplatz.nl uh, helped us working on this bar. So they did 
the painting, etc. Um, and I think this was where it started. So here you see all kind of secondhand mirrors on the back, all the roofs, all the tiles. It's all secondhand, but we wanted to make it look like new. And this where our neighbors they were very happy, as you can see. So this was the the neighbor where it started. But then it really worked. And what happened is we made a building nobody asked for, but everybody wanted. Um, a building almost 100 people donated money to uh, without knowing what they got. The building uh, aesthetics committee gave approval before a single drawing was made because this is one of the, it's very small, this bar, but it was for us like a blueprint of uh, how you wish you could build with secondhand materials and also all the problems you will face because. Uh, all the materials are not certified uh, to get, at least in the Netherlands, it's very complicated to, to get permits for these kind of uh, things. Um, so this is where it started. And then um, there was another uh, group of people, they um, uh, came to us and they said, yeah, we are also in the north of Amsterdam and we are collecting plastic. Can you do something with that? And it's just garbage plastic. Um, so this is how we look normally like designers and architects look like. I mean, we, we dress and we behave like architects. This is also what we did with together with Peter. Um, but we also look like this sometimes. And this is actually the fun part. Um, so we, we, we just rented a, a, a place and we said that we, we told them, just bring the track and we can we see what we do with it. And we just start. And we, we will make something out of your trash. Uh, and then we thought, okay, we need some people to, to for some free labor. No, that's a joke, but we, we worked with all kinds of students and um, uh, they helped us to, to clean all this household plastic. And actually it was really fun to do, but it was also really in the beginning annoying because you get this yogurt and it's not white anymore, but it's green, so it's very dirty and you can see on her face. But uh, we also, by doing that ourselves, we discovered the value of the plastic. Uh, we started to learn about all kinds of plastics there are. And um, we also saw if you really clean it and if you collect it, uh, collect it and sort it on color, um, you get a really nice raw material. Uh, and we decided to, um, to work with this raw material. Uh, we decided to to make actually some some machines our own and um we, because we we needed something to collect and to, to screw and to have to shred and to we needed to store and to press etc uh so we just uh got asked our welders can you can you build a machine for us and we tried to develop it ourselves with some smart people we knew uh and this was our injection molding machine, which is normally a machine of 15 meters. Um, and we made it very small. And um, we, of course, we gave it a nice color and we made it look nice. So this is it. We did the collecting, we did the sorting, we did the washing, sorting on color, shredding and the molding. And um, then it was making, making tiles and we made uh, all those tiles, and it was so nice to do because every time you open, when you open the mold, you get a different, um, uh, a different tile. And we always had the ambition of making a big project out of this uh, because we thought if we can make um, uh, facade material out of plastic, then we can really make a difference. Because, um, and we also, of course, knew this wouldn't happen with our machines, but we had to start somewhere. And we had to, to gain the knowledge because if you go to the industry and you say, okay, this is what I want, they say it, it's impossible and it doesn't work, it doesn't look good, and then the mold costs, I don't know, 20,000 euros, so it won't happen. So that's why we decided to experiment ourselves and to understand the material and the beauty of the material. Uh, and this is actually what we made. So we made some walls uh, for the university. And uh, here you can see uh, one of these little rooms we made. This, the gray, uh, is also recycled plastic from the Gova Plast company. Uh, so everything you see here is recycled except the girl and the lamp. 
and it's all household image again. It's all household uh, plastic, and every tile looked uh, different. Um, yeah. So uh, about the plastic, I will come back on that later because uh, I think this is a story which is still going on, but. Before I go there, I have to make some uh, bypasses and to tell about some other projects. But happened in the meantime because it's also a bit on a chronological order. Um, in 2016, we made a Dutch Design Week presentation. We were asked to do that and uh, to make the main exhibition, and it's a 7,000 square meter exhibition uh, with about 200 participants and. Um, we were asked to, 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 to set up the whole plan for it, and to make, um, to, yeah, to be the art director of the, of this exhibition. Um, and it was really nice to do, of course, it's a really nice question. But the first thing we said, it's, it's so strange that all designers are working on, or not all, but many designers are working on sustainability, sustainable design, and at least they, they it's always somewhere. And it's so weird that after an affair of nine days, you throw everything away in the container um, and, and you made a lot of rubbish. And uh, we said, okay, if we do this art director job, we really like to do that, but we uh, try to have a, a theme and the a theme is no waste. So this was the first year we did it at the end for three years. And uh, in the beginning, we uh, just collected uh, a range of materials. Uh, for example, Interface is a really big um, carpet uh, factory. I think the, in the Europe they produce 1,400 square million, uh, 1,400 million square um, meters of, of fabric. Ferrosol, uh, which is uh, screens for for windows, and they, it turned out they had many leftovers, many many leftovers. We have the big museum in Amsterdam, Stedelijk Museum. Um, it's a museum of contemporary art, um, and um, they had an exhibition, and we had 400 square meters of black MDF. Uh, and this is how we collected a range, mainly leftover materials from them. And we made this exhibition uh, with all these leftover materials, and um, it was really nice to do. We also made a, an exposition in this exhibition um, about it was called the making of your world and um it was made out of this uh this this leftover panels from the state museum um but it worked very well and, oh yeah and here we showed of course our our plastic uh, machine on the dutch design week um it worked very well but at the end what happened uh, we had a lot of rubbish because we had second leftover materials and at the end we extended it for a week or for the Dutch design week but at the end it was still left over and of course we gave it away to students and it was used so nothing was in the con really in the container but we discovered this is not the smartest uh, way to deal with material uh, and then the same year we also made this pavilion uh, in the Dutch design week and uh, we actually planned to do it to make it out of recycled or old uh, scaffolding net, uh, scaffolding fabric, and um, but it turned out to be too dirty, and we already proposed a plan. So we said, okay, we buy new scaffolding net, and then uh, we just don't um, cut it; we just roll it up and give it back to the um, to the owner. Uh, the owner didn't want it back, so at the end we sold it on Marktplatz. But uh, somebody bought it and it still had the same value. So we didn't make rubbish. It, we, we got something, the material was just kept the way it was used for nine days, and then uh, we yeah, it kept its value. Um, so this was the end result. And the, we thought, okay, this is a much smarter way. So you just borrow materials instead of using leftover materials. Um, and if you borrow materials, you borrow them uh, in such a way that uh, if you borrow something, you can't uh, cut it or you can't glue it or screw it or whatsoever. You have to 
give it back the way you got it. So we also made this one, this, this structure uh, from this place, from green panel it's called. And uh, so there is this, this costed 500 euros of material and that's it. We gave everything back and, uh, and one truck with transport and that's it. So this is actually a model we, we decided which really works. And of course you can borrow, but you can also uh, pay for it and then you can rent or lease it. Yeah. And then one year later we did it, we made this pavilion, uh, it's in the same series and it's here again, all borrowed material. So you see the piles of wood, they are just borrowed. Uh, the PVC tubes, it's PVC structure, There's no, it's not cut, it's just PVC borrowed and we gave it um, back. And here we also used leftover materials because this is really a problem, which is we, somebody said we have thousands of square meters of white ceiling plates, what you have normally in the office, these really ugly ceiling plates, uh, mainly 60 by 60 centimeters. Uh, I think you know them, and uh, in all, mainly in all buildings, we see here at least in the Netherlands, we have them a lot. And uh, we, we covered the whole pavilion with this ceiling uh, place. So we have all, all these materials uh, and uh, no waste. And um, actually, uh, it also costed like 500 or 1,000 euros. So it's mainly the, the labor and the making, which is, uh, and the transport, which is it's the thing. Uh, and this is another addition here after. So it's kind of the same, but a small, yeah, a little different. Um, as I, so, uh, I showed you, I, uh, we we um, uh, we showed in 2016, uh, 16, uh, we sh we showed on the exhibition on the Dutch Design Week our plastic machine. I told you about that earlier, and um, um, everybody was really enthusiastic about this machine, and uh, we were asked. Can't you make a pavilion out of this recycled plastic? And we said yes, we can. Uh, so this uh, this was also a question from the Dutch Design Week. Um, and we said okay, we can do that. So the, the year, this was 2017. We made people's pavilion, uh, and uh, we started to experiment. Um, um, so we thought okay, if we uh, uh really have to make a building out of recycled plastic we can't make it with our own machine we knew that but we already had the knowledge and we were looking for a partner to um to 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 scale up and to really make a facade of recycled plastic and we found uh, this partner in Goverplast in belgium and uh here we are very proud because this is our first uh, tiles coming out of the dutch design week um, but the first thing we said to them is this is from top view where the Dutch Design Week is always. And there's all, it's a, uh, Eindhoven, it's a Philips area. Uh, Philips was uh, started there and it's very big. Many old buildings are very nice and are empty. So we said, we told them, why should you even make a pavilion? Just rent a building. That's the most sustainable you can do. There are so many nice buildings there. But they really wanted a building um so we said okay if we do that we have to borrow the building uh for nine days and uh we give everything back at the end um so this is what we did we just uh this is the normal lifetime of a piece of wood for example or any material uh it's there and somewhere it ends and we just um took it up from the shelf and decided to use it for a while and to give it back, like I showed you before as well. And this was the image we had. We thought, okay, what if we can put all the materials on the square and just uh, build something? And then at the end, we make the same image uh, again. This is the Lustron house. It's uh, designed uh, after Second World War uh, in the US. And this is how it looks when it's um, mounted. Um, so I told you if 
uh, if you have to, if you want to borrow something, you can't screw, you can't glue, you can't sew, you can't drill. So you have to find uh, different connection techniques, uh, like uh, strapping, for example, or uh, clamps, etc. Uh, and then we thought, okay, how can we make really big beams for a pavilion? Because um, we decided we need some really big, big beams uh, to make a big structure. Because the question was to get 600 people in a pavilion. So we needed to, to make some serious, uh, serious structure. Um, and we um, uh, found out th that there is this strap machine for transport. And we thought, can't we just strap the wood? and um, strap it all together to a nice um, structure. And these were the first sketches. Uh, so we collected, we were looking for wood because if you have raw wood, uh, you can find it. It doesn't really matter if there's a little, um, if you demolish it a little bit because it's mainly built for rough structure. Um, we also, uh, this is a typical Dutch one, I think, uh, where looking for concrete uh, piles, normally they go in the ground here uh, to get the houses stable. They're about yeah, from 10 to 20 meters. And um, we like to show them because it's so typical Dutch. Uh, we, we thought, what if we can use them, uh, not in the ground, but on top of the, of the, the square. Uh, and we found this net. We thought, okay, if we can borrow this, these are all materials. If there is a little thing breaking off or something, it doesn't really matter because they're just raw materials. They, they are used for construction. Uh, and this was our first test. And then it really, we, we thought, okay, this, this can work very well. But then we needed to, to borrow, really actually borrow all these materials. And it's really complicated if you have a really big wish list, which is longer than I just showed you, if you have this wish list of everything you want to borrow. Uh, so we did many presentations for companies, but then we had one company in New Horizon, and they really helped us out. Um, uh, and they got in contact with many other companies. And well, we managed to borrow everything. But then we also needed to do the construction uh, test because uh, it's impossible to calculate. So at the university, we really had to, uh, yeah, to, to, sorry, I went too fast. To, uh, we really had to measure it. Um, and uh, meanwhile, we had to collect uh, plastic uh, with volunteers. So all summer, we collected plastic sorted in colors with in different spots in the city. Uh, and we collected at the end uh, 8,000 kilos of plastic. Um, yeah, and this is, the, I sh uh, showed you already, this is the, where we are in Gothenburg in Belgium, our first house coming out of the, the Eindhoven uh, collected plastic. Uh, and then we, this is what's all in it. So it's all the materials and the exploded few. And then the building started. So we, uh, then you really have to, to make it happen. And uh, it's really interesting because it's a really complicated puzzle uh, to get all this standard materials and you can't sew in it. So you, you have to, to get them together and all sizes are different. So if something is too, there's, if some company says oh, it's a bit bigger, then the whole puzzle collapses again. You have to start all over, you can imagine, because we were not allowed to use uh, soles or whatsoever. Uh, and we made all the parts, strapped them, and then uh, the building went up. And for this, I think we we needed some cake um, to, to to support all the, the builders. Um, also. Um, here you can see the concrete piles are strapped on the, the wood. Uh, and we did this actually with Arab engineers. Maybe you know them. Uh, they're worldwide, really big. Um, uh, here you see also the diagonals. Uh, they are from a, a, a building which was demolished in the Netherlands. So they were left over diagonals uh, for to, to, yeah, to get stability in the building. Uh, 
we see here a facade uh, on the on around the lower facade which is an uh, office facade from uh, from a big internet company um and we had many volunteers hanging uh, all the tiles and of course the last moment we was completely stressed so we got we needed more people and at the end we had to hang uh, 9500 of plastic uh, tiles and this is the end result so this was the building um and um yeah i think uh, what we really tried is to <clears throat> make it uh, look like an actual uh, building and uh, not like a heap of materials um and uh yeah to make it really one design it's always very important for us also for the north park bar and all the other projects i mean uh, to have uh, to experiment to have sustainable goals is really good i think but on the other hand we also are really aware that we have to make something that just looks good and uh, that works and something that is not a, just a, a heap of materials you found it has to be bigger than that and this was the interior of the and here see details of the of the roof um yeah this is actually what i said here it's the jury of the uh, arc 18 award we won uh, pavilion is a real building with a logic aesthetic and that's what we always uh, try to to achieve with it uh, and this was actually the picture we really had in mind um and uh, on Vimeo, you can find a really nice movie. It's one minute um, uh, of the building up and the breaking down. Um, so just search for People's Pavilion and you will find it. Uh, and this is us on the material after the design week. So when everything went back to all the companies and back on transport. but then uh, we had many many people came to us and they uh, asked um, can you can we buy these tiles can we actually because i have a house i have a company and i want i want your tiles uh, so we had not a problem because we couldn't deliver the tiles um the biggest problem was we didn't have fire certification um and we needed a lot of plastic, of course, to um, to, to to make the tiles. Um, the fire certification is a real uh, problematic, uh, and we worked for about two years on it to get it done on a, in a sustainable way. And we did all kinds of research and tests. Um, <clears throat> and at the end, we finally, uh, last October, we had our final uh, report, uh, and we have the fire certification and uh it's the class b which in the netherlands means you can we have a facade material that can go on every uh building but this was really a complicated thing and then we thought okay uh after two years of research and doing that um we have to start a company and we call it uh, pretty plastic uh and first we only made grays uh, that has to do with the fire certification but now we also work on colors so uh, in half a year, we have colors as well. And um, we also made a little school in uh, last January uh, with, uh, with this, this tiles. And this is what you um, uh, see. There is a gradient from very dark to more light. And we switched actually to uh, PVC. And PVC is actually uh, one of the worst materials in the world. Uh, it lasts forever. That's the good thing, uh, but um, it's also not so uh, uh, not so, uh, so good for the environment. Uh, but we believe once it's there, you better use it because now uh, it's really problematic uh, and it's not reused. And actually, we use it every day in our building. Uh, PVC tubes, you know, it for electricity, for rain pipes for uh, sometimes window frames, et cetera. I think this should stop, but uh, there is enough PVC on the world to reuse. And, and it doesn't happen. 
is really weird, but it doesn't happen because it's complicated to reuse it. And we found a technique to, to really reuse it in a safe way. Uh, and that's why we started this, uh, this company. Uh, you can find more information on uh, prettyplastic.nl. Uh, and it's really interesting that next year we have some really uh, big buildings um, yeah, with our facades. I think we sold like 8,000 square meters already for next year. So uh, that's really interesting. So uh, why I show you this whole process, it's what I really like is you start kind of naive in something. And um, after a couple of years, it turns out you have a lot of knowledge and you really get somewhere. And um, that's also what I think is, is interesting of on our way of working. It's not waiting for a project, but we just um, dive into it and we don't know exactly where it ends, but it always leads to something um, bigger. And I think this is this experimenting uh, takes a lot of time, but it's also very um, valuable to do. Um, I see I don't have much time anymore. Uh, uh, it's the Brasserie uh, 2050 we also designed, and the question was to uh, design a restaurant, um, the barn of the future, um, in 2050. Uh, and um, we decided to borrow. Um, but we here we made more a mix of recycled and recyclable material, uh, dismountable material, uh, high residue uh, value material, rented and borrowed material. Um, and these are the standardized materials we used. Uh, and we borrowed uh, all kinds of, um, yeah, for example, the potatoes we used, we borrowed for as ballast. We needed uh, 20,000 kilograms of ballast uh, in the pavilion, and we borrowed the, the, the this for, uh, potatoes, 20,000 kilos of potatoes, uh, for one weekend for the Lowlands Festival. In the, we put it in these uh, boxes and we gave it back. It was from the farmer next door. Um, and we thought, okay, the farm is actually like an icon. So we just wanted, we really liked that the shape of a farm. There's so many different things, but there's also kind of similar always. And we thought, okay, we can, it's so nice the, the, that the, 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 the icon of the farm will always last, I think. And uh, that's, um, this is the end result. And um, what is not, was really nice on this project that we, work together with the food industry, the people, the chef cook, uh, the chef, um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, all the kinds of, yeah, the whole, the whole team to make one concept of this uh, Brasserie 2015. And again, here we try to make out of standard materials, um, yeah, we try to make architecture out of standard material. Uh, and the same we did for this pavilion uh, we made two years ago, Raum Pavilion. Um, it's all um, uh, standard materials, but it's also, uh, there was not so much time. Um, so we thought, okay, we just make it, uh, we, we, we mainly make it dismountable. Uh, and uh, just from wood, which is always good to use. So, um, and we had a polycarbonate, secondhand polycarbonate facade. And we found all kinds of, uh, we did tests with leftover, um, uh, leftover uh, uh, plexiglass, I don't know, uh, per, 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 um, and uh, we made a pattern in the, in the pavilion like that. And all the yellow parts, uh, here you can see, you see, these are the places where you have to screw to take it apart. Uh, so it's completely uh, dismountable and um, yeah, can be put somewhere else in another location. And also all the beams are as long as possible to keep their value, et cetera. Uh, this is another small pavilion. It's very small, but it's more a research a research, a research thing for us. Uh, it's docking station pavilion. 
and we thought if we, we got this question of to make a very tiny house pavilion uh, and we thought okay well, how can you make a sustainable tiny house because you, it's so tiny you have to cut all the materials all the time so how can you do that um, and then we thought okay we need to use as less material as possible and we thought what if we make it out of polycarbonate uh, because then we calculated that if you if you if you uh, melt all the polycarbonate of this pavilion you, you don't it's it's just a re i don't remember exactly anymore but it's just it's mainly air so it's a very small block of plastic uh, but the main problem for example if you have a caravan there maybe you know this uh, sandwich panels they're so multi-layered with aluminium etc etc and we thought what if we can can we make a pavilion completely out of 100 polycarbonate so you can at the end just uh, melt the pavilion and uh, make something else out of it because polycarbonate is quite easy to uh, recycle um, so we we made all the details uh, as you can see here so the doors etc there is no hinge it's all polycarbonate so open and close you can see sorry for the dutch here um, and uh, yeah, we, we made all the details of polycarbonate. So there is only a, a steel structure in it, um, which is part of the, um, uh, the, 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 the truck or the trolley. Um, but uh, we actually are working on another thing to make also a structure out of polycarbonate. So to have a single material building, so there's no other uh, material in the building as polycarbonate. Um, and in this way, you can really easily recycle because recycling, the, the, one of the most difficult things is to, um, uh, to take it apart. Again. And, uh, also, if you can't keep the value of the material in a way that, that you really have to, the best is always to, to, uh, to, to to keep, for example, a beam as long as possible and to use it as long as possible. Uh, but if this is uh, not possible, then I think uh, recycling is an option, but then you have to make it easy to uh, recycle in the future. So we are also working on that. Can you make use as less materials as possible? Um, um, and this is um, the last project we are working on, and this is for the future. Uh, and it's really exciting. And I'm, uh, I'd just like to show you uh, a glimpse of what this uh, will be. And hopefully this will happen uh, next year. Uh, what you see here is um, um, our uh, ministry, uh, The Hague. Um, and uh, this is the, yeah, this is the, the, the parliament, the Dutch parliament is, uh, is based here. Uh, and it's one of the oldest parts in the Netherlands. I know in other countries this looks more proud, or I say more with probably with more gold, but we are Dutch, so it's quite um, yeah, modest, I think. Um, but this uh, uh, parliament will be renovated uh, for five years. Uh, the parliament will move to another location, and this is in the Hague city center, and there are 300,000 tourists every year coming here. Uh, and we got the question, if this is closed for five years, can you do something to get all the tourists there for five years and to keep it interesting? And what we did, um, we made a copy of the building you see here in the center. This is the main building. And we actually made a copy on the, in front out of scaffolding, scaffolding nets. And here you have a few uh, over the building site when uh, the renovation starts. Uh, and what we do is actually is all the materials that come out of this um, renovation will go into, or uh, not all, but part of the materials will go into our pavilion. So the pavilion will slowly, um, ah, sorry, um, uh, will slowly change and um, we also uh, evaluate. And um, yeah, uh, for example, uh, all the tiles from the square uh, so if you stack them it's a wall of 300 meters long uh, and we use this for the fundament of this building so um this is for a future project we work on and i just thought it's nice to 
show a glimpse. Um, I think I, I'm finished, and I talked 45 minutes exactly. So um, I thank you for uh, expressing listening, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, thank you Bernard, for this uh, very wonderful presentation. Um, I find that your work really inspiring and uh, very applicable to a Swedish context as well. Uh, mostly this supply-driven process and this use of borrowed material. I also find it very interesting with the, the humbleness between the uh, materials and the way the gestalt and design is driven by them. But I have a question for you. Um, you talked a bit about it in your lecture, but maybe you can give us like a quick brief um, overhaul of your definition of temporary architecture. I don't think there is really real temporary architecture. I think all, all architecture is, is temporary. Um, the last project I show where the parliament is based, this building is 800 years old uh but still uh there is a renovation every i don't know every 50 years every 100 years uh now and then and for example we get um um five acres do i say it right yeah i think five acres of uh, roof singles now um so also this building will last but i think the materials um it may be not all the materials but even then there is there is even such an old building, materials go and come, and there is it's so. It's also a way the materials. Are, a lot of materials in this building are also there temporary, and uh, sometimes temporary. Uh, in the Netherlands, at least, we have many offices which are built maybe mainly. I mean, I think for like thirty years, uh, and then they are demolished because um, yeah, we don't use them anymore. They are old fashioned. Uh, so there's not so much architecture here in the Netherlands which lasts very long, I think, nowadays. Maybe in the, the architecture from the past, uh, which is still there, we are happy that's there and we take care of it. Uh, but I think, yeah, what is temporary? I think it's all temporary. So it doesn't really matter if it's one day or 30 years or 100 years, you have to take care of your material. Thank you. Um, th thank you once again for a very interesting and uh, interesting lecture. And I hope to have you back, uh, have you in person the next time here to speak with us again. So um, with that, I will leave the word to you, Gunilla. Thank you, Werner. And thank you, uh, Sveriges Arkitekter Skåne. Tack så mycket till er.